Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Hello, Cleaning Nation. So glad to be with you once again. Remember, keep in mind, if you'd like to be a guest on the show, if you've got questions for me or you want to hire me to speak at your next event, you can email our producer, Natalie, at nat, N-A-T, at growmycleaningcompany.com, or you can just give us a call at 480-648-5149. Let's, uh, we love hearing from you. You can leave a message. We can chat. Give us a call right now. Today, we are talking with Luciana Sosa from Lucy and the Cleaning Fairies. Lucy and the Cleaning Fairies has served the Connecticut area with residential cleaning services since 2008. If you want to reach out to Luciana and her team, you can get a hold of them at www.lucianas, L-U-C-I-A-N, nas.weebly, W-E-E-B-L-Y.com. Luciana, welcome and say hello to Cleaning Nation. Hello, Cleaning Nation. I'm so excited to be here. So glad. Thank you. Yeah, so glad to have you on the show. We were talking a little bit before and I'm already excited about your energy and um, what you've got going on. But before we jump into the coaching, tell us a little about yourself and your business. Uh, well, I started working as an independent cleaner in 2008. And my business card said Luciana's Home Services. And I put all those, all mailboxes I could find. I just put a, a, a business card there and tried to, to get that house to clean. So that's what I've been doing since then. And last year, I decided that maybe it was too hard for me to grow by myself. So I got a couple of people. And I said, well, it's not only Luciana anymore. I have some more girls around me. And I had a, a one house that I used to clean uh, in the past. The little kid in the house used to call me the cleaning fairy because uh, when they came in the house, it was a mess. And uh, when I left, it was all clean. So they say, oh, you you make the magic. You're the cleaning fairy. So I, I like the idea. So now it's Lucy and the cleaning fairy. That's a, very cute. I love it. Although if and when you want to hire a guy, you might have a, a bit of a problem with that. But I like the name. I think it's, uh, <laughs> it probably speaks to your customers really well. Yeah, yeah, they like the idea. All right, awesome. And then, um, great. All right, so how did you get a hold of Cleaning Nation? What? Uh, how did you get connected or discover our little show? Uh, I'm not sure if it was through podcasts or if it was through um, YouTube. I always search for things and just popped up and I just started listening. I said, well, maybe that's going to help me. And I just got hooked. So. And it was last week. So the funny thing is, like, in a week, I'm already in the show. So that's so funny. <laughs> well, that's awesome. <laughs> and, yeah, I want to tell you, yeah. Cleaning Nation, we're always looking for good guests. And it doesn't matter if you listen to all the shows or if you're a newer listener like Luciana. We're just looking for people with passion to grow their cleaning company, a coachability, desire to learn. If that's you, you should absolutely uh, – contact Natalie and see about being on the show. And I'm super excited to have you, Luciana. That said, what's going on in your world? How can I help you today? Yeah, my, I, I do everything to get the customers. And, you know, I try to do the best uh, for everything. But I have one problem. I'm not a salesperson. I am that kind of person. I, I would never be able to sell cookies or anything because I am terrible with it. I have no confidence. So, when I get to the client, when I get to the house to meet the client, I it's stronger than me. I freak out. I I do everything, all the preparation. I dress nicely. I just I have all the pitch, all the words that I should say, and they just disappear from my mouth. So you know, my hands sweat. It's it's a freaking moment for me. So I I just wanted to know how I could fight this. That is such a cool question, and I don't know that we've addressed it on the show before. But I am confident that Cleaning Nation, there's some people out there going, that's me. Where's, why, where, why has it been 100 episodes for you to do this episode, Mike? So thank you for asking <laughs> that, Luciana. Um, I definitely have some feedback for you. But let me get a little more information just so I can, I can coach up as, as well as I can. 
Tell me what you're afraid okay. of when you go in, because that sounds like a terrible experience. That if that's if that was my experience selling anything, I would never want to sell anything. So, what uh, is it you're afraid? Yeah, you get, you get, tell me a little bit about your fear. You get there and your hands start sweating. You're scared. What are you afraid is going to happen? Um. Yeah, I think I'm afraid of hearing no, and that's what I hear all the time. So I think because of this experience of going there and I. I try, you know, to ask the right questions and, uh, you know, talk to people and that's what they need and this and that. And then, like, I look around the house and I say, look, your house should be this much. And the person starts saying, oh, you know, well, somebody else works for me. And they say, like, a very low price. And uh, I, I don't know. I just can't negotiate. But this moment is really, really hard for me. All right. So it sounds like you're afraid that they're going to say no, which is even worse because it sounds like they say no quite a bit. Yeah, they do because they, they, feel, they feel in the air my, my lack of confidence. All right. Well, let me give you some encouragement. First of all, there's, mm-hmm. I, I would say, a big myth out there that some people are good salespeople and some people are bad salesperson people. And if you're a good salesperson, you come out of the womb charming and everyone loves you and wants to throw money at you. And if you're a bad salesperson, oh, well, everyone always tells you no and, 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 negotiates your price and makes you feel uncomfortable. That's absolutely not not the truth. The second myth out there is mm-hmm. that salespeople are crafty and want to take advantage of people and are just out there for the money and they want to win. And if other people have to lose so they can win, that's okay. That is usually a poor salesman, maybe an average salesperson, but the truly good salespeople aren't like that at all. The good news is, Luciana, mm-hmm. the really truly good salespeople in their heart of hearts, their deepest desire is they just desperately want to help and serve the person that they're working with. Is that how you feel or is that not how you feel? That's how I feel. All right. That's exactly how I feel. I, I know I can do a good job. I know I can help the best way I can do for this person. But at the end, it's just hard to, to, give, to give this idea to the person. So let me. The first thing is let me give you permission to stop to quit being a salesperson because it sounds like <clears throat> the salesperson I'm doing the big air quotes as you define it is not someone you ever want to become. So I don't want to coach you to be this mean, greedy person that takes advantage of people because I, a we don't want another we don't need any more of those in the world. We need more Lucianas in the world. And B it'll never take mm-hmm. right. That's just not who you are. So you're not going to ever be good at that. So instead of going on sales calls from now on, why don't you go on service calls or help calls or um, just reframe it so you're going out to serve and help people. Is that? Are you okay doing that? Yeah, I think that's more more like me. Okay, so if you go out to come to my house, and you're like, Mike, I just love you, and um, it looks like you're just desperate for time, and you work so hard, and you don't get the time with your family, and I I think I can redeem some of that time for you, and I can take care of some things that you don't love doing, so you can spend time with your baby and with your wife and relaxing because you work so dang hard. If you made me that offer and I said, well, someone else can do it cheaper, is that going to hurt your feelings as much? Or are you just going to go, man, I'm, I'm kind of bummed, Mike. I was really looking forward to helping you. But honestly, I just want what's good for you. And if, if the cheapest bit out there is what's good for you, then that's not me. And I'm happy to have you go see that person. And you know, in the off chance that maybe you go with the cheapest bid and they're not insured or they don't care about you like I do, or they're just in it for the money or they don't show up or they let people come into your house that aren't bonded or they steal something, you know, whatever, then give me a ring because I just want to help you. And, you know, if, if going with the cheap person is what is going to help you best, then I am a hundred percent behind you. Is that kind of the mindset or, or verbiage that you could say, or would that still be scary for you? I think I would need to practice a lot to be able to say that because I generally, you know, when, when people, let's suppose I go there and talk to the person and sometimes people don't really say anything. They, they just want to hear from me. And even if I ask them, they answer yes or no, or this or that. They, they don't give me much, um, much information. So, right, so and then they say, okay, I'll call you. And then I, you know, this is another moment. I say, okay, they didn't ask me anything. So I have no idea if they're having, if they like me, if they don't. And oh. if I say a bunch of stuff for them, maybe, you know. Okay, hold on. Let's, let's walk through a couple of these things because we can, I can, we can really help you. So first of all, the way that let me give you some words that are really going to help and this will this will give you the ability to not have that situation happen first of all when you walk in feel free especially if you're nervous 
just say, say I'm, I'm selling to you, Luciana. I'm, I'm trying to serve you in your home. And I say, Luciana, can I be honest with you? You go ahead and role play like you're the homeowner, okay? Okay. All Luciana, right. I can be, oh, thank you so much. I, I got to tell you, and I probably shouldn't say this because it's, it, it's maybe no good. But the reality is I am the worst salesperson you're ever going to meet. I'm terrible at selling. I'm really, really <laughs> nervous right now. My hands are sweaty. I tried to memorize all the words I was going to say to help you, and I've forgotten all of them. Are you okay if I just act like Mike and, and quit trying to be a good salesperson? Because I'm terrible at it. Would, would that be okay? That would be great. Okay. So on that note, Luciana, as we get to the end, and this is so hard to say, but that, again, I'm just going to make myself say it. If I don't think we're the best fit for you, I don't think we're going to be able to take good care of you. I think we're going to be, you want price and we're not going to be too expensive. Or for whatever reason, I just don't think we're going to be the best fit because I really want you to be happy. Would you be angry with me if I just told you I don't think we're a good fit and, and you should probably find someone else? Can I, is that okay? Yeah, that should be okay. You, need, you can uh, offer whatever you have for me. But if you don't have what I need, I, I will need someone else. Oh, perfect. And honestly, that brings me to my next question. Uh, and last question, then we'll get started. If for whatever reason, you don't like me, I'm too expensive, I'm too short, I'm too tall, I'm too ugly, you don't like the car I drove, for whatever reason, if you don't think I'm going to be a good fit, would, you, would it be okay if you just told me that I'm not a good fit? That's fine. Oh, gosh, you are making my job. So thank you so much. Like I said, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> you being so helpful... Is or you being so nice is really helping. So at the end of our time, if I think we can do a good job, and I tell you I think we can do a good job and give you a price, and you think that we're a good fit, you know, you, you're not able to tell me no thank you, what would you like to see happen next? Um, I can call you or I can keep your information and maybe compare with the other estimates and see what I can do. Well, again, if you don't think we're going to be a good fit. Would would you just tell me no thank you? Yes, sure. Okay. So at the end, if you need to get other bids or think about it or talk to your husband or for whatever reason, we're no good. You'll just tell me, hey, Mike, I don't. you're too expensive or I don't think you're going to be able to do a good job. You'll do that, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. But if no you problem. do think we'll be able to do a good job and I think we can do a good job, what what would you like to see happen at that point? Well, and then we, I think we can take a look at your schedule and mine and see when we can set up the first cleaning. Okay, cool. Um, awesome. Well, let me, let me ask you some more questions about why you called me out and what's wrong in your life and how I can help it. And then you just go on from there, Luciana. So do you see how, one, mm -hmm. I promise you, if you just say, I'm a terrible salesperson, are you okay with that? No one's going to yell at you. They're all going to be very kind and very sweet and very thought, oh, it's okay, Lucy. And they're going to want to help you. So it'll take you mm -hmm. feeling much more comfortable and they'll feel much more comfortable. And all that sales nonsense goes out the window. Is, is there anything I said that you would feel uncomfortable saying to, to one of your clients? No, this is me. I would definitely do that easily. Okay. And then we because, had an agreement yeah. up front that if it wasn't a fit, you would just tell me, right? I, you're too expensive or I don't like you or whatever. Great. But when you said, well, then if mm -hmm. I kind of insisted on, and I would encourage you insisting on, and honestly, I do this in the call before, not when you show up, but I, I'm not going to go out to someone's house unless they agree that if I don't think they're a fit, and if they go, well, li listen, Mike, I just want the cheapest price and that's all that matters to me, I'm not even going go to their house. I'm going, oh, gosh, thank you so much. Remember when I asked you if I could tell you we're not a fit? We're not the cheapest. So if that's what you're looking for, I'm not, I don't want to come out and waste your time because I can assure you we're mm -hmm. more about creating value in your life and making your life better and redeeming time. Um, and if you're looking for the cheapest price, you know we, we pay our people well and have insurance. So we're just not it. Um, I wouldn't even go out on that. But I'm, I'm going to get a commitment that they tell me, yeah, if, if, if everything works, we want to hire you. That's, is that a, are you comfortable with kind of how that worked out in terms of giving them permission to telling you no and asking permission to telling them no? And then just saying, well, if, mm -hmm. if neither of us say no, what do you want to have happen? And they're just about every time you're going to go, well, then, then I, you know, then we, we want to get started with you. That's great. That's great. Because my, my big problem was to get there and be someone that I'm not, because I'm not a salesperson. I'm not good with that. And I, I was just trying, it was, I was trying to be someone else. 
So when I come, if I come there and tell them the truth, say, look, I, I know what I'm like, something like that. I know what I'm doing. I do a, a great job. I'm, I'm confident about my job and I'm here to help you. And I don't need to do all that, the, all that acting like I, I am a salesperson and I know everything about it. If I don't, that, that's what made me insecure before. But I think if I come with this uh, idea of coming and being honest, would be much easier, much easier. I, I, you know, I'm a person that I have problems of lying. I cannot lie to anybody because I'm terrible at lying. So it's hard for me trying to be someone else at that point. So if I'm honest, it's going to be easy. And let me tell you, what people are really looking for in this world is transparency and honesty and realness. So when you say, I can't be a good salesperson, and then you literally described all the traits of an amazing salesperson. A good salesperson is going to be totally honest, is going to look out for their client's best needs, is going to try and help the customer. So I don't think that you're not a good salesperson. I think you're an amazing salesperson. I think you have a warped view of salespeople and you've dealt with some nasty salespeople that were terrible salespeople and you think that that is what you're trying to model. So the good news is I'm Mm -hmm. not saying... Luciana, you're weak. So instead of being a good salesperson, be a terrible salesperson. I'm saying, Luciana, you're strong. You're honest and you're sincere and you're real and you have a desire to help. That's what a good salesperson is. So it's we just need to redefine you trying to be a bad salesperson who lies and is manipulative to allowing you and giving you the freedom to be a good salesperson, which is someone that really wants to help their customer and is honest and is themselves. They don't want to fake Luciana that I'm going to go be a salesperson. They want the real person. Mm-hmm. And just like this podcast, hopefully when you listen to the podcast and now you're on the podcast, you're like, wow, that's Mike just the way he is. And if we did coaching together, you'd go, well, this isn't a different mic. It's the same mic on the podcast. And then if uh, our uh-huh. kids were in baseball together and we were sitting on the sidelines together, you go, this mic's the exact same mic as the guy before. So there's no different mic or sales guy mic or this mic. There's just Mike. And the same thing with Luciana. I promise you, people are going to rather buy or invest or work with the real Luciana than some fake Luciana trying to be a, a fake salesperson. Does that make sense? Makes all sense. Okay. I'm going to give you one more quick, you and Genius Nation, one more quick tidbit, and then we're going to hit the lightning round. That tidbit is, the one thing I do want you to do where you might get a little nervous is the rookie salesperson gets nervous and they want to talk about themselves all the time. So the one thing I didn't like when you were saying, hey, I don't want to lie. I, you know, I know that I'm good and I do what I do. I'm not a good salesperson, but I'm really good at cleaning and I'll do a good job for you. And I know... Do you see, hear how many eyes I said in that? That's that's a selfish mm-hmm. salesperson want to talk about themselves. The good salesperson wants to talk about them. So let me give you just a 30 second snippet. I'll go back into selling, Luciana. You could be the homeowner. Bad salesperson, hey Luciana, I want to tell you, I'm the best cleaner you've ever seen. I have the best chemicals. I really care about you. I know what's going on in your life. I want to um I'll be the cheapest. I'll make sure I do this. I bring these kind of chemical. I have this kind of I, I you're you've lost interest. I'm not talking about anything of interest in you. Now let me tell you how a good salesperson mm-hmm. is going to handle that. Luciana, tell me about why you called me out. And then I'm going to be quiet for a minute or five minutes or however long it takes for you to get that. And then I'm going to tell me more about that. And then I'm going to shut up and I'm going to listen. And this whole conversation Mm -hmm. is going to be Luciana telling me about her life. And then I'm going to try and help her at the end. But it's not me talking about me. It's me listening about Luciana. If the best sales lesson I can give you is ask questions and listen. And if you're being short with me and I go, gosh, Luciana, why'd you tell me why you, you called me out? I'd really like to help. And, you, and you're kind of pissy and go, I just need the place clean. Oh, all right. Well, gosh, I got to imagine there's 100 people you can get to clean the house. Why'd you call me specifically? I don't know. You just came out of the internet. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about more how I can help you. And just keep asking questions and listening and they'll break down. And if they don't, call it. If they're being rude after four or five questions, like, tell me about that. Why is that important? How can I help? And they're just being short. Like, listen, I just need a price. I would just say, gosh, Luciana, I don't think we're fit. I'm not here to clean your toilets. I'm here to really help change your life. Um, And if you're Uh not able or willing to give me the information I need to best help you, I don't think I can help you. I'm going to withdraw from the bidding and wish wish you the best of luck. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. Is that, are you comfortable kind of saying that? Yeah. So I think I wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be the first time, but after I get some practice, I think I can do that. Yeah, and practice will help. But the, 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 the reality is just, again, the best sales... And I think this is from Jack Daly. But the best sales lesson I've ever got is ask questions and listen. That's all. Just truly be interested in the mm-hmm. other person and, and try to understand what's going on in their world. And that's uh, worst comes to worst. You'll, you know, 
people don't get listened to very often. The fact that you came to their house and listened to their problems and really took an interest in them, that's going to give that's a beautiful gift that you can give them where they they choose to have you uh, be their cleaning service or not. So you can really walk out of that home going, hey, I gave them a lovely gift and they felt good about themselves and special because I listened to them. Um, that's a pretty that's a pretty good day's work, whether they hire you or not. And the magical thing is you'll you'll find that those people tend to hire you a lot when you just listen to them because everybody else comes in and wants to talk about them and how they can help and what about them, 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 them. And no one comes in and just says, tell me about your life, Luciana. You've got a beautiful home here. It looks like you've got some kids. How old are they? I promise you people are desperately thirsty for that in their lives. And Luciana, you seem like such a sweet mm-hmm. person. I think you'd have no problem asking those questions and listening. Okay. I've ranted for long enough. Let's hit the lightning round. I want to give you the opportunity to give back to Cleaning Nation. Luciana, question number one, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, my mom used to say something to me and I kept this and uh, my, my brothers kept it. It worked really well in our, in our lives is that when something you try doesn't work or some somebody that makes you feel inferior or whatever that whatever bad that happens in your life, you just use that feeling, that failure feeling as a step letter. So you grab to it and you grow and you just show it's not that way. You just show your real self. And don't just don't let anybody else convince you of the opposite. Perfect. Uh, great answer. Question number two, what's the biggest mistake you've made in the cleaning business to give us an opportunity to learn from it? Um, I think getting advice from the wrong people, maybe um, something that worked for them didn't really work for me. So for that reason, I priced my first job too low and I couldn't think of a way of growing out of that because it was working for everybody else, so it should work for me too. So it was when I realized um, I had to change, I had to start searching advice from uh, other places, like the podcast, for example. So I'm just trying to get great advice instead of bad advice. Well, you are in the right place. Last question. What's one idea that you've used in your life that Cleaning Nation can put into practice right away? Something small, something personal, something business, just anything they can put into place today before they go to bed. Uh, I think uh, taking some time off during the day, maybe like half an hour. Sometimes our life or our business, we're having a great day. Some other days are just terrible. Some days we ask what's going on. So maybe if we take a break of that, of those thoughts, we just take a break, go ride a bike for half an hour or just meditate or do whatever, but just get out of that, uh, of that mindset. And then that's, that's when you're going to have the solution, when you're going to have the, the best idea to solve that problem. And then when you come back, you, you have a much fresher mind to solve those things. Could not agree more, Luciana. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you just being open and honest and letting, uh, giving me the honor of being able to serve you and help you. I appreciate you. I know that Cleaning Nation appreciates you. If you want to check out Luciana's show notes page and discover everything you need to grow your cleaning company, go to growmycleaningcompany.com. You can leave your questions, your comments, your rude remarks. I will see you there. Congratulations! You are now 16% smarter. Still can't get enough cleaning goodness? Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry lovin' at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.